One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was a lot of work. I did it. I'm not gonna do it again for a while though. Ahoy, this is Zdenka. Smartphone gimbal comparison video part two is here right now. In today's video, let's compare DJI Osmo Mobile 3 gimbal versus Hohem iSteady X versus Zhiyun Smooth Q2 and Zhiyun Smooth 4 versus Moza Mini S and Moza Mini MX. In this part, we will look at the gimbal's apps. We will look at how compatible they are with iPhone and Android devices. And of course, at the end of the video, I'm gonna voice my opinion on uh, the best budget gimbal when it comes to features and all that, but that's my personal pick. Of course, that will also depend on what type of phone you are using and what you're looking for in a gimbal, whether you want something which is more stable or you don't really care about the stability, but you care about all those features. And in case you missed the part one where I was comparing all those gimbals, in terms of their hardware, I linked it below the video in the description so you can just watch it after this one. And if you are new here, welcome. My name is Sden Karola. If you want to learn more in terms of smartphone filmmaking or photography and find out about the new tech, consider subscribing. The phones I'm gonna be using are Apple iPhone 11 Pro and Android Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. When it comes to Android phones, I highly suggest to check compatibility lists because not all the features might be available to all the phones. To make it more organized, I'm gonna start with Apple iPhone 11 Pro and then I'm gonna move on to Android. Now I really went through everything. I really tested everything, um, made a huge table sheet here. I placed the gimbals in the order from the gimbal which has the least features to the gimbal with the most advanced features, which is up to date. So for the iPhone 11 Pro, the sixth place is Hohem iSteady X. The app used is Hohem Pro. You can only shoot in automatic mode, no manual feature. You cannot change lenses if you have phone with multiple lenses. In 4K and 1080p, you can do 30 and 60 frames per second. You can also actually do that in 720p. And it doesn't have timer, beauty mode, slow motion, panorama, or live stream. It does have time-lapse, which you can customize vertical filters, face tracking, focus slider, and you can create moment stories. If you are going to use this gimbal outside of Hohem Pro app, you cannot change the gimbal's shooting modes. The shutter will work with native camera app and ProTake. It doesn't work in Filmic Pro. Fifth place is Zhiyun Smooth Q2. With Apple, you can shoot in automatic mode only. You cannot switch between the lenses, in 4K, you can do 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. In 1080p, you can do 30 and 60 frames per second. And in 720p, you can do 30. It has a timer, filters, you can do slow motion, 240 frames per second in 720p. You can lock brightness with slider. Yes, you can do 180 degree panorama, time-lapse, pan 180 degree moving time-lapse, tilting motion time-lapse, panning and tilting motion time-lapse, and POV time-lapse. It does have beauty filters, face tracking, HDR, and you can go live. It doesn't have story or moment feature, gesture control, focus slider, or control. But if you will use this gimbal in other apps, you can directly change the modes of the gimbal by pressing the button. In a native camera app, the shutter will work. Not in Filmic Pro though, it's not compatible. It is compatible with ProTake though, and the shutter will work. When it comes to fourth and third place, I was very hesitant here because I just really wasn't sure. It seems to me like both gimbals should be really sharing fourth and third place. Um, I'm gonna start with Zion Smooth 4, and to be honest, that gimbal should not be really even included in this bunch of gimbals because it's a completely different level of gimbal. It's more for advanced filmmaking. So let me start with Zion Smooth 4. It is for people which love complete control, advanced manual filming. App is ZY app again, but different from the previous Q2. You can film in manual mode, cannot switch lenses, in 4K, you can choose from 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. 
1080p offers 3060 and 720p offers 30 frames per second. In photo mode, you can do also multi exposure and long exposure. Timer is there as well. Beauty cam is there, slow motion, brightness lock, 180 degree and 3x3 panorama, time lapse and motion time lapse, vertigo feature, filters, face tracking. You can control focus with the wheel and HDR. It doesn't have story or moment feature, gesture control or live streaming. If you use this gimbal outside of the Y app, you can change modes with buttons directly on a gimbal. In native camera app, the shutter doesn't work, but it is fully compatible with Filmic Pro and ProTake. Third place goes to DJI Osmo Mobile 3 when it comes to DJI Mimo app. Yes, you can shoot automatic and manual with Apple phone. Yes, you can switch lenses. In 4K, 1080p and 720p, you can shoot in 24, 30 and 60 frames per second. It has beauty mode, slow motion, you can lock brightness, you can do 240 degrees and 3x3 panorama, time-lapse, hyperlapse, story feature is there, gesture control and face tracking. You cannot do vertigo mode, it doesn't have filters, focus slider is not there, HDR or live streaming is not there either. If you film outside of DJI MIMO, you cannot switch gimbal modes, you can use shutter with native camera app, you cannot use shutter, it's not compatible with Filmic Pro, and yes, you can use shutter with ProTake. Second and first place are shared again because those two gimbals are using exactly the same app, which is Moza Genie app. I'm talking about gimbal Moza Mini S and Moza Mini MX. Moza Genie app has been recently released, so it has lots of new features, which for example, the GI Mimo app doesn't have because it is already a year old. You can shoot in automatic and manual mode. Yes, you can change lenses, plus can enjoy shooting with two or three lenses at the same time. In 4K, you can do 24, 30 and 60 frames per second. In 1080p and 720p, you can do 240, 120, 60, 30 and 24 frames per second. You can take photos manually, timer is there, beauty mode and slow motion. In automatic mode, you cannot lock brightness. In manual, yes, obviously. It doesn't have panorama. Yes to time lapse and hyperlapse, moment mode, gesture control, filters, face tracking, and live streaming. No, there is no HDR or focus slider or vertigo, but you get extra stuff. Zebra pattern is there framing, you can select external microphone, sound meter is there as well, and it has built in great video editor. It's time to look at the Android and their compatibility with those gimbals, with those apps. Let's run through that. Now on the Android, which is no longer mine, I don't have Filmic Pro installed and I don't have um, the, the full version of ProTake, so I cannot really test all those features with the Android there. DJI Osmo Mobile 3, Hohem iSteady X, and Zuyun Smooth Q2, their apps offer only automatic mode and 30 frames per second in 4K, 1080p, and 720p. With Moza gimbals, you can shoot in professional mode where you can control exposure and white balance. On Zuyun Smooth 4, you can shoot in manual mode. All apps have time lapse and hyperlapse. DJI Osmo Mobile 3 has beauty filter, you can lock the brightness, it has 3x3 and 240 degree panorama, it does have gesture control and face tracking, and it also has stories. It doesn't have a slow motion or vertigo, and you cannot live stream. Hohem iSteady X has face tracking, and you can use filters. It doesn't have a slow motion, and you cannot lock the brightness. Xeon Smooth Q2 has slow motion, has panorama, filters, and face tracking. It doesn't have a story or moment feature. You cannot use gesture control or you can't live stream. Xeon Smooth 4 has slow motion. You can lock the brightness. You can use vertigo feature. It has filters. You can do face tracking. And you can also select your focus with focus wheel. Molta gimbals have beauty mode. You can lock the brightness. You can use video editor. It has filters, it has face tracking, it has different focus options, and you can do live streaming. I know very well that 
many of you which own Android are very frustrated when it comes to those gimbals apps and what they offer. And I totally understand that. I used to be very frustrated and I was very even angry at some of the developers. But quite recently, I took my time and I looked it up why that is really happening, why there is such a big difference between the Apple and the Android. And I could easily create another video on this whole topic. So what I did for those interested, I linked this very well written article in a great detail below the video in a video description. So you can read that after this video so you understand better. And now I know that once I read that article, I totally understood. Let's look at the current pricing of those gimbals. Right now we have July, end of July 2020 from low to high. Hoem i Steady X and Moza Mini S is $69. Moza Mini MX is $89. DJI Osmo Mobile 3 and Zhiyun Smooth 4 $99. And Zhiyun Smooth Q2 costs $139. When it comes to my personal opinion, um, if I want to get a gimbal for Apple, let's start with the Apple iPhone 11 Pro and I just want it for a regular filming, maybe I'm going to attach to it extra filter. I'm not going to attach to it extra lenses. I'm not thinking about using external microphone. I just want to use something for filming, everyday filming. Maybe if I'm going to go somewhere on a vacation, stuff like that. I'm definitely gonna go with the app Moza Genie app. It's just simply most advanced. I can do all those different speeds there. So I have a choice between Moza Mini S and Moza Mini MX. Now, if I had a phone, Apple phone with only one lens, I would get Moza Mini S. I simply like the feel. It feels very natural. I like the whole just it feels better in the hands but because it is hard to move the phone to decide if you have a multiple lenses and a filter i would probably for multiple lenses and if i want to use extra filters i would use Moza mini mx it is also definitely more advanced when it comes to buttons you can do it. you can control everything with the press of a button i'm still not sold on a tripod that's why i'm still going back to the Moza mini s but Absolutely, if you have multiple lenses on your phone, um, maybe you want to use a filter because the motors are strong, they can handle the balancing. Yes, I would get Moza Mini MX. When it comes to DJI Osmo Mobile 3, it is all-time favorite. Most of you like it. You all want me to film with this. Um, it is a year old and I honestly would like to see a little bit upgraded version of the app. DJI Mimo. I would like to also see maybe edit 120 frames per second there. That would be fantastic. For the gimbal, I would like to see a little bit stronger motors. This time of the year, which is July, beginning of August, once a year they always come out with a new version of the gimbal. This is version number three. This year I haven't heard anything yet if there will be a new one coming out. I checked all the rumors, I searched online, but I couldn't find anything. So I'm not really sure if they are coming with a new one. We just have to wait and see. When it comes to Hohem iSteady X, I actually really like this gimbal, to be honest. The price, $69, you can beat that. I was filming with iPhone 11 Pro and DJI Osmo Mobile 3, and I was quite disappointed that I was seeing the motor with the ultra wide angle lens. So the next day I took this one to film just to play with it. And I was so, impressed with the way the motors are reacting. I could just flip it upside down every time I wanted to. There was no problem, no uh, stutter when it comes to movement of the motors. It was, it was doing exactly everything I wanted. I gotta say that I have to give credit to this one. I really liked it. Um, I like to use this one. And when it comes to Zion Smooth 4, like I said before, it's a whole different level of a gimbal. It's more for advanced filmmaking. I would maybe compare it to just completely different gimbal than these ones here. Let me voice my opinion on Android and all those gimbals. It is very clear that you get the most options with Moza Genie app. So either Moza Mini S or Moza Mini MX. For manual filming, Zoom Smooth 4 is good. If you like simple filming, then DJI Osmo Mobile 3. After that, I would say Zoom Smooth Q2 and lastly, Hohem iSteady X.
Now, this is just my personal opinion, what I would do. Of course, it's gonna depend a lot on your um, needs. What kind of phone you have, what size phone you have, what features you're looking for, what features you are not looking for. If you care about stabilization, if you want something which is the most stable and all that. Hopefully those two videos really helped you with the decision. Well, hit the thumbs up if you found this video informative and useful. And don't forget to subscribe to more because I'm getting ready for a car shoot with a smartphone. Should be a nice one. And if you have any questions, comments, or simply want to say hi or ciao or ahoy, you know what to do. You can leave it in the comment section below. I'll see you, my friends, in the next video. Ciao, ahoy.